So SEO has changed dramatically in the past two years. And I've been observing SEO as an active participant and sometimes from the sidelines for over a decade now. And I've seen some big changes and the changes that have happened in the past couple of years and most importantly, the impact it's having on users like you is I'd compare them to the panda and penguin days of SEO. The OG SEO guys will know what I'm talking about. So let's talk about the state of SEO in 2025. What's going on? What can you do? And what's the future for you as a small business owner when it comes to Google search? Now let's talk about the elephant in the room first, which is Google AI overviews. They were launched as a response to ChatGPT. And the state of Google AI overviews today is that majority queries, over 50% of problem solving queries, fact related queries, and a lot of other types of queries are dominated by Google AI overviews. And the impact of this is what you would expect. Big websites and small websites are all losing a huge chunk of their traffic to Google AI overviews. Now, depending on the kind of website, depending on the kind of traffic the website gets, some websites are reporting over 50% drop in traffic just because the number one result now is, well, Google itself. And that was the state of desktop traffic. Mobile is worse in some cases because on mobile, you have ads, you have AI overviews, people who ask, and even YouTube videos before you even see a website ranking in search. And if you're not number one, then you might as well be on page number two for many commercial queries. Which brings us to the title of this video, which is probably, is SEO dead? Well, the answer is not that simple. I would say the writing on the wall doesn't say SEO is dead, but it does say you cannot rely only on Google SEO to survive and thrive and hope to grow your business. Now, the number one goal in any business is to stay in business. That means understanding and adapting to change. And you should treat this SEO change or Google change as just another change that you have to learn and adapt. And even though you might be getting punched in the face by Google and SEO, there is a silver lining. There are more people online than ever before. Majority of people are now finding information and even transacting online. And the most important part is Google is not the only source of traffic. In fact, I can give you some specific examples on how small and big companies are thriving without relying on Google SEO at all. You might have heard of a small clothing brand called Gymshark. It's just a billion dollar company, no big deal, right? And they build their entire business online without relying on Google SEO. Well, all they did was, well, anybody knows, they went all in on social media. TikTok, Instagram, and influencer marketing was their bread and butter. And they started from zero, and now they're a billion dollar enterprise just by power of social media. And let me give you another practical example. There's a really popular website in India called Car Deco, which is basically an online website to compare and shop for cars. And they have a thriving YouTube channel with impressive numbers. Now you saw those views on social media. How much is that exposure worth to them and how much traffic is it driving to their website and also brand awareness? Let me give you another car example. A company in India called Bromotive, which is a car repair shop. They started vlogging, yes, vlogging behind the scenes content of how they repair cars, how they're painting cars. And they are so successful that now they have millions of subscribers across multiple channels. Yes, multiple channels. And they even have a dedicated media team now because they're so successful on YouTube. And they've taken all this success on social media to build a thriving franchise business. That's how they're expanding to multiple cities now, just with the power of social media. And there are similar or better examples in almost every business niche you can think of. Gardening, landscaping, solar, HVAC, pest control, every single business you can think of. So don't think that your business is unique and it won't work on social media for my brand. Now, I'm not giving you these examples to convince you to ditch SEO and go all in on social media. But what I am saying is that you cannot ignore social media and only hope that SEO will be the only way your brand and business grows in 2025 and beyond. So maybe now you're thinking, all right, it makes sense. What do I actually do to ensure that I don't completely ignore SEO and I don't have to do full-time social media to actually get traffic to my website and even grow my business? Well, glad you asked because that's what the video is about. Let me give you a few practical tips that you can implement right now in your business to ensure 
a more big of a safety net when it comes to generating traffic and sales and leads and revenue for your business. The first thing you should do is don't ignore Google and SEO. It might sound counterproductive to what I was just saying, but having great content on your website is beneficial even if it is in the long run. So what you should do is figure out what your customers look for, find out those keywords and write that content on your website. And of course, you can use a tool like WP Beginners Keyword Tool to find the relevant keywords and then use a tool like SEO Boost to optimize that content before you publish it on your website. More importantly, local SEO is not as competitive as regular SEO. So if you're a local business who provides services in a local area, then local SEO can be a great bet to ensure that you get leads and customers directly through Google. So if you're using WordPress, then use a tool like all in SEO and also use something like Google My Business and optimize the hell out of it to ensure that you rank higher in any near me queries and also in the map listings for related queries. Also, implementing some strategies to gather a lot of reviews from your existing customers will also boost your organic traffic coming from local SEO as that's one of the most important key factors that Google looks for and also customers look for before they transact with any business. The next thing you should focus on is becoming an authority. Now you can do this with search and also on social media. Let me talk about search first. We all know that Google is not very transparent when it comes to showing all the factors they use to rank websites. But they've clearly said in the recent documents, especially with helpful content updates and related documents, that they're trying to find authoritative websites and websites that they can trust. We all know that the EEAT guidelines are in place. That means expertise, experience, authority, and trust are the most important factors what Google looks for in a website. So what you have to do is just go old school SEO and work on getting some word out there about your business and website, which basically translates to getting mentions everywhere throughout the web, especially on high authority websites related to your niche. So if you have, let's say, magazines in your niche, go figure out how you can get featured there. Do you have trade organizations get listed on their websites? Is there a popular publication that covers your niche or business get featured? Wherever you think authoritative websites talk about something about your business or niche, that is where you should be focusing on because those are the signals that Google is looking for to understand which are the highest authorities in your niche. And this has another added advantage as well, which is basically the next point. Now, I don't know about you, but recently I've been observing that my search behavior is changing. Many times, instead of going to Google SEO, I would just go to chat GPT and search for things, especially when I'm trying to figure out a lot of different answers. And I know that a simple Google search won't answer my question. Because who wants to go to a bajillion websites, compile lots of data, and then arrive at the conclusion when the answer can be just served to you? Well, the added advantage of getting mentions on popular websites, authorities, trade magazines, and all the different areas of the web is that it increases your chances of you being recommended as the service provider of choice or business of choice when somebody makes a search about it in ChatGPT or other AI tools as well, because that is where they get their information from. They're basically scraping the web, figuring out all this, compiling all the information and then giving answers. So if you as a business is mentioned on authoritative source number one, authoritative source number two, number three, number four, number five, what do you think the LLM or the AI will think about, which is a great business to recommend for this niche? Yours. So it's like killing two birds with one stone. You get better SEO rankings, and also you get better recommendations in AI tools or large language models. The next thing you should be doing and probably are already doing to some degree is get all in on social media. Social media is a giant driver of traffic if you can figure out the algorithm. But one thing is for sure, being consistent is a great thing. So if you're posting content sparingly, avoid that and start posting consistently. That can be once a week or once a day, depends on how much content you can create. But start to create content consistently on social media, whatever you think is the right platform for your niche. It might be Instagram, Pinterest, or even TikTok. One thing to keep in mind when you're starting to post on social media is don't go just post random things. Develop a good content strategy. And one of the benefits of doing social media is that social media is not search driven primarily. So it doesn't matter whether a user is searching for something. If the algorithm of the platform thinks that this content is interesting, it will serve it up to the right audience. That's the part you have to figure out. 
If you spend any time scrolling on social media, you've probably seen people making things interesting. I've seen things in gardening, carpet cleaning. People are taking simple ideas and making them into really, really popular content. And that is your inspiration to get started and make some interesting content. If you're not sure how to make interesting content, then the simple idea is that what you can do is just take the keywords researched out that you would regularly do for your blog post and then make them into video content. You can go the shorts route or the long form route, but I would suggest whatever fits the content best is the format you should go for. Now, the benefit of creating video content like that is twofold. First, you can take that content and release it on the social media platform directly. That means getting natural distribution of content to the audience and you can embed those on your website as well. So whatever traffic you do get on your website, they can be more engaged because a video is usually more engaging than a blog post, at least for a good chunk of the audience. So you're increasing the likelihood of people sticking through your website and Google also ranks YouTube videos nowadays. So if you post something on YouTube, it's very likely that it might be just start ranking in search and then people come into your website through that video as well. So it's an overall rounded strategy to convert or take content that you already decided to write content about and just make those into videos as well. Another thing to keep in mind is you should not ignore non-video platforms, which are the OG forums, Reddit, Quora, Pinterest, not technically a forum, but still a huge driver of traffic. A huge chunk of times you will see that for many queries, Reddit, Quora, and Pinterest actually show up in search much more than regular websites. So if you are not active on these platforms, then become active, answer questions, create some content there, and you'll have the benefit of appearing in search and also getting some referral traffic. So it's a win-win for you. And the next and most important thing I would suggest that everybody do is understand that this is a long-term game and you might not recover the traffic that you've lost. But here's an interesting statistic. If you lost 50% of your website traffic, but you made every visitor twice as valuable, you still have the same business. And guess what? Controlling the traffic coming to your website might not be in your control, but increasing the value of every visitor that comes to your website definitely is. So try and maximize the value of every visitor that comes to your site. If they come to a commercial page, then maybe show them a pop-up using Optin Monster. Or if you're an e-commerce website and people don't purchase, maybe run a retargeting campaign or use Funnel Kit to optimize your funnel so that you can re-engage the users and increase your lifetime value of every customer. Or maybe create some lead magnets so you can give those away in exchange for people's email address. Create your own list and send emails to them so that you can engage the audience anytime you want. So to end this video, SEO in 2025 and beyond is not dead, but it is changing dramatically, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worst, maybe for some people. And as I said before, the businesses that will win are the ones that adapt quickly and learn how to play the game. By diversifying traffic sources, maximizing visitors and focusing on real audience engagement. Let me know what you think about this video and what are the strategies you have taken away from this video that you can implement and you will implement in your business. You're watching Yuvraj from Blimble Beginner. I hope you found this video valuable. If you did, share it with someone. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.